Hi. In this video, I want to discuss uh, the overcurrent protection uh, options that we have for transformers. So in this case, it doesn't matter what type of transformer we're dealing with. The requirements for different types are a little bit different, but there's kind of three different scenarios of overcurrent protection that we'll see. And by overcurrent protection, I'm talking about just where they're placed within the circuit. So I've kind of got the three options here. We notice they all start out the same, right? We're in a building, right? That's this side over. In a building, we always have a main overcurrent device protecting that building. <clears throat> and we could call this a feeder overcurrent or a main overcurrent. It doesn't matter. And then inside that building, there's going to be a bunch of other loads, which is all what these arrows are getting to. So in each of these situations, let's talk about situation number one up here. Now, I would call this my uh, primary only, right? So in this situation, I'm only going to have a overcurrent device on the primary of my transformer. And when I say only on the primary, I'm not talking about the rest of the building. I know there has to be a overcurrent device somewhere else in the building. So how this would work is in this situation, we would literally take our transformer and we would have a primary overcurrent device, probably overcurrent and disconnect built into one. So this is a primary OC. Now it is gonna be directly protecting the transformer. The primary OC not only protects the primary, but it is actually also protecting the secondary because whatever goes into my transformer has to come out of my transformer. So it's protecting both the primary and the secondary. Of course, in this situation, we would also have this feeder OC as well, somewhere else. Now this is the most common probably installation method that you'll see is a primary overcurrent device protecting the primary of my transformer, call her good. What you might see some other places, and this is much less common, and that's just because it's not required. It's just a little bit unnecessary, but it is possible. You can have uh, a primary plus a secondary. Oops, secondary. OC. So in this case, you can see I have my primary right here, primary OC, and I'm also installing a secondary OC. Uh, as well as over here, I have my feeder overcurrent protection. Now this one's a little bit overkill because as we discussed, the primary will protect the primary and the secondary, but some specs for different jobs or certain applications, you may require that secondary overcurrent protection as well. What is also going to be common, so again, the middle one, not too common, but the codebook does give us the requirements in order to size that. The third one here is going to be a little bit more of a special application. We'll notice on the primary, there isn't an overcurrent device. Here on the primary, I only see that disconnect. Now, a disconnect is required on all uh, transformers by code. So all of these have the disconnect as well. But on this one, there's special certain circumstances where if my feeder OC is sized correctly, and it's a certain, within a certain percentage of the rated primary current, if that feeder is small enough, then I don't require overcurrent protection here. But what happens in that situation is I am gonna require that secondary overcurrent device. Now the reason is this, because I only have a disconnect here, my feeder overcurrent is so big that it's only gonna protect against short circuit conditions. So I am gonna require that secondary overcurrent device and that secondary overcurrent device is really there to provide that overload protection so we're not burning out the transformer. So this is kind of the three configurations that you will see for transformer overcurrent arrangement or placement. Um, now, as we get into sizing different overcurrent devices, I have some other videos, so you can check out those other videos. But the way our codebook breaks it down is it breaks it into three different categories, and we're gonna go over all of those. Um, basically, transformers that are over 750 volts, or what we would call high voltage transformers. Then there is 750 volts or less 
other than dry type, meaning a liquid filled usually, a liquid filled transformer, 750 volts or less. And then the third type of transformer, probably the most common for commercial electricians anyways, would be the 750 volts or less dry type transformer. Uh, so take a look at those. Um, if you have any questions or you want to see anything else, please pop that in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching.